And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Centaurus. We're going to be playing some more Hecarim with Targon. Uh, played this deck one time five days ago and it was a lot of fun and it was definitely a deck that I wanted to get back to. And so we're that's what we're doing. We're getting back to it. So what we have here is we have like the Endure start sometimes where we have Bark Beast, Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker. Um, awesome combination together, especially the Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker combo. So that's going to be something that we can do during some games. We can uh, be real aggressive and get ahead with that kind of start. But then we're not just, you know, if, if that doesn't pan out or if the, you know, the opponent has good defense and stuff, we're not just done. You know, like we're not, um, we have a lot of good late games because we're playing Targon and we're playing Invoke stuff. So, you know, we have our Solari Priestess, our Star Shaping, they can go invoke for us and get us some good celestial cards, even in a really in soul at the top end that can invoke. But then um, our mid game, we got Thresh to control the board. So like you know, maybe we get ahead with these things, then we have Thresh, and that's usually a, a pretty good uh, combination. Hecarim puts a ton of pressure on our opponent and can come in right before we start playing at Celestials. Rekindler brings back some some of our. Um, Champions, we did get to last time. We did get to, we had an Aurelian Soul die, and then we got to bring it back from a Rekindler, so that was pretty sweet. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's our deck. So this is another another good Shadow Isles and Targon deck, and my favorite Hecarim deck right now. And so uh, we're gonna go ahead and go play this one over in ranked. We have the PNZ board. Oh yeah, I guess we did last time, didn't we? That's fine. We'll keep it. We'll keep the PNZ board. I don't use that board a ton. We'll keep it. So we're gonna go play five games in ranked. So we do here on the channel, we we'll go play five games and kind of see what our, our record is. So we got Twisted Fate Swain. Good matchup to start with. So I think we're gonna mulligan the star shapings. Pill Cascade's an, a good strong spell and it replaces itself. But I really want to find like Blighted Caretaker to go along with this Curse Keeper. Especially how we have the Yes. We'll have the attack token on turn three. So perfect time for Blighted Caretaker to have the attack token. We also haven't played anything out. So maybe we don't actually blight a caretaker. So I'm just gonna pass, cause like if they wanna pass also, like I'm missing out on one point of damage here. If they wanna pass also. Okay. All right, so if I caretaker, get a lot of damage in, but that's kind of about it. I guess that's what we're doing though. Cause we know that turn five, turn six, like that kind of stuff, we're gonna be doing these cards. So it's really just by doing this, I don't have anything to do on turn four. Right now, but at, at the very least we get to, um, even if we don't play anything next turn, we'll at the very least save mana and have Pale Cascade available later. Huh. I guess they just drew that off of Salvage, but then they, they passed also, they didn't play it. It's kind of surprising. Maybe they want to save their two mana also. The chains, they never stop. <laughs> Lots of small units on both sides of the board. That's good for Thresh. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to attack with anything. It doesn't feel like it. Like so, like my four three would just trade with their three two. My two one would trade with the one one. My one one would just get killed. comes the attack. So, 2 on block over here, 1-1 one, one just block over here, 4-3 block there. 
That's five things dying for Thrash. Us taking three damage. It's not... I mean, so, like, they're turning on Plunder. It's not a Riptide Rex turn. I can't really stop them from turning on Plunder anyway. Even if I wanted to. It's an interesting one. I usually would just play Hecarim here, but I'm going to play all these things out. Fear the power do not see. Speak, stars. Speak, I say. So the biggest problem right now is Twisted Fate and Twisted Fate Red Card. Like if I go if I go Hecarim and they go Twisted Fate Red Card, that's a problem. We'll have Pale Cascade that could save one thing. I'm still going to do it. Hecarim's just too good. I hope they don't have a Twisted Fate red card. I'm always up for a round or two. Of course they do. Yeah. Could play the Onslaught of Shadows. I'm a people horse. Probably shouldn't. Probably should just go to attack. Take their time. There we go. Victory at any cost. The grave calls. All right, can you heal that thing? It's gonna allow this to be able to block Swain. We can only play one more gem. I don't think there's much difference between a 3-2 and a 4-2, but I guess now drawing Vile Feast, I guess that would be a difference between the two. The guilty would ban. Yep. Wish I would have done one more gem. Because if I would have done that extra gem with the 4-2, then I could Vile Feast the t that and also um, Hecarim. But all oh, there's just not not much choices. My other my only other choice is playing Vengeance. Um, I'm worried about Leviathan here. Kind of worried about Leviathan. Which means I'd have to Vengeance Leviathan. Can they call me a shark? That's obviously very bad as well. Obliterate two enemies? Ugh, I just don't uh, behold a celestial card, but I'd love to obliterate two enemies. Okay. That's getting a little scary. That turns Twisted Fate into six. So they find a salvage, it's leveled up. No, no harrowing in this deck. Um, our top end has, we have one Aurelian Soul, one Infinite Mind Splitter. Left when I'm done. If 
If they have burst damage to me, they could respond. They could do that even before I vengeance. Like if I need need like vengeance Swain to keep them from stunning things. Want to kill Swain so that so again so they don't stun stuff. Okay. I could have vile feasted the, the powder keg, but I wanted to see if they responded first. By my hand, with Noxus rise. Well, I don't love that. We're in a lot of trouble if they have a Mega Rain. Please don't have a Mega Rain. Okay, a guillotine. Not as bad. Because, like, the 1-1 one -one blocks the Shark, and then my Hecarim can block any of these. play the Scourge or not? This is difficult. You know, I want to play the Scourge, uh, but I don't want my Hecarim to die before attacking. Would like to attack with Hecarim. It's not going to level up, though. It's going to be four, It's going to be 6 out of 7. It's going to be so close, but not quite leveling up. Um, Time marches on with or without you. I'm just gonna go right to attacks. Probably gonna glimpse beyond one of these ephemerals, that's what I'm kinda thinking. Best run while you can. Curse Keeper. Puts them down to two. Curse Keeper is better to glimpse beyond than an ephemeral. Hey, sheep. So Twisted Fate's gonna level up. It's not easy beating leveled up Twisted Fate, that's for sure. So it looks like this is going to be a removal spell that will keep me from drawing my two cards. Oh wow! So that, that's that's the card they that, uh, that's the card they just drew, of course, because uh, that that card last turn would have killed me. The reason why I like playing my Glimpse Beyond still instead of waiting is because of like leveled up Twisted Fate. I want to get cards out of their hand, right? Because whenever they each card they play with leveled up Twisted Fate is very powerful. Getting the extra cards, and I didn't want that to happen. Oh man, they top deck Zap Spray Fin. Blue as the serpent. That card's perfect. Because that will get them, you know, two spells. Man, yeah, Spray Fin's perfect. So I guess I, I should have just played the Scourge. I, if I would have played the Scourge, I guess they, they did draw the Mega Rain. Oh, no. So their other card they had in hand was Sentry? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just dead. I'm just dead with the red card there. So their cards in hand were Mega Rain and, and the third Arachnoid Sentry on Wednesdays. Hey, Grace Claw. Good morning. Good morning. Double Bark Beast, Solari Soldier. Let's keep all these one drops. Well, welcome, yeah, welcome back, sheep. 
Glad to have you here. Alright, keep them from attacking. Punish transgressions. And I'll take my two damage. I can learn from watching you. We have some similar stuff here. I am the blade in the darkness. Are you supposed to be here? Hmm. Just trade with the sparring students. Probably a bad trade. Yeah, probably a bad trade. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. I am the light beyond. Everyone's a garden. Definitely try to take down Zed, which they don't have. After that, taking down something isn't, you know, like, all the rest of these have three health. I guess maybe if I just didn't block the sparring student, maybe I could have killed the sparring student, so that's why that was probably a bad trade. Maybe I should just glimpse beyond that, that thing instead of dealing two damage to their Star Shepherd. Soul Shepherd. <laughs> Star Shaping, Soul Shepherd. Stalking Shadows. They love their double S names. Um. That is pretty awesome. Chance. We're gonna take some damage. None of those are perfect. Well, since we dealt damage to the Soul Shepherd, we were able to finish it off. Don't find another shark, please. We do know that they have another ephemeral. Right, because at, at the very least, one of these is going to be an ephemeral. to challenge these I'm gonna just have I'm gonna have my blighted caretaker on defense for this next turn whenever they're gonna be playing like their ephemeral and attacking with a bunch of sharks gosh soul shepherds will make them big I mean I could I could vengeance that five six force them to play another ephemeral We're gonna do that. The Yordle here's with me. Am I flesh or shadow? Wow. Um. Wow. Uh, so that's gonna be me taking ten. Or no, dead. No, I'm just dead. Yeah, taking 10. If they attack with the Soul Shepherds, I die. Let's move. 
Stalking Shadows was busted. Yep. Saplings. Ten from there plus those two. Stalking Shadows was busted in that game. Great game for them. Alright, more Bilgewater Noxus. This should definitely be an aggressive version, especially how they have Darius. Should be pretty aggressive. I like the Blighted Caretaker, and I mean, honestly, I like Thrash, and I like Star Shaping, but... Um, let's get some early stuff to go along with this Blighted Caretaker. I have my orders. Okay, so it looks like we'll save Pill Cascade Mana, turn 3, probably play the Priestess, turn 4 Caretaker. Just having the attack token on turn 4. I think that's the plan. Coming in hot! Which may be a little too slow. Who's gonna get in my way? Well, we got Priestess. Uh, meteor shower. Sunlight Let's take the traveler. There's plenty of killing left. You started without me. No one's the wiser. Huh, that's pretty good. Basilisk Rider. Probably gonna have to Pale Cascade that thing. Go like this. Do love Pale Cascade with Blighted Caretaker. That is pretty awesome. Glad I saved that two mana and never cast that Vile Beast. That's pretty big. Alright, get our Sunburst. Daybreak, <laughs> whatever. Uh, okay, block. Block. No, 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 no! Block. Maybe it makes more sense to block over here. We take the same amount of damage either way. That overwhelm, I can, I can, uh, yeah. I think it makes more sense to block that because no, it, no, it doesn't. I take the same amount of damage either way. Just get, just get the four three overwhelm out, out of here and get the three three there. No, that doesn't. That block doesn't make any sense. Let's take the zero mana card. I become who I was always meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that means either, Cordek. So I want to play Thresh this turn. I also want to play the Solari Priestess. Hmm. So Solari Priestess plus, you know, Caretaker or Vile Feast, you know, double spelling with those or single spelling with the Thresh. Single spell with the Thresh. War Mason, reporting for duty. For the glory of Noxus. Hey, what's up, Jake? Hey, Jake Speed. Good morning. Stop. Trust your heart. This is gonna be close. Please don't kill me. Please don't have Darius. Or anything else that kills me. Golden Sister has lifesteal. 
Daylight warms the I will take that car. Um, that's probably bad. I'm just gonna head around. That last card could be Noxion Fervor. And that would have made sense to use the Vile Feast right there because of that. Apprehend. So 17 life. Let's see, 4. Uh, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think I get 15 damage. Yeah, I think I can do 15 damage to them. Which is not enough. If they don't break, they'll burn. Alright, good thing I kept that vile feast. Didn't use that. If I butcher and I kill the curse keeper, I don't get the 4-3. I would just have the 3-2. But I mean I guess the 3-2 is better than the 1-1. One, one. Where are you at? Four? I'll be six. Yeah, killing the one two is an option also. But still, the one two is still probably better than the curse keeper. The one one that can't block. I think I'd rather just have a one two in play. That was definitely an option. Another option was like the gold. You know, I could kill the golden sister that was stunned and would have dealt. Just another one point of damage to them. Alright, GG's. Well, I did invoke a lot, and we didn't see any Obliterate cards. No, I mean, I guess we saw the one for the Trundle, but we didn't see any Obliterate cards for that Aurelian Soul. Yeah, Aurelian Soul is really good. Kordak asks, what is your point about one ofs and two ofs, Hawk? What do you mean, what is what is the point? I think one of and two ofs are awesome. You okay, whenever you're whenever you're playing Legends of Runeterra, you're gonna play a, a really wide variety of games. You're gonna be playing against a ton of different opponents. Um, games work out differently all the time. The the only time and so like having access to a lot of different cards is is really important as far as winning goes. The only the only deck that you don't want to play a bunch of ones and two ofs in, the only deck that you want to play a lot of three ofs, is going to be um, a a a deck that does not plan on interacting much with the opponent and it has like a a, a uh, like one plan like plan A that they are trying to accomplish every single game and plan A has to work and don't real then they don't really have a plan B or C or D like it's it's plan A all all board ahead every game no matter who the opponent is Find doesn't matter that's my darkness. game plan that's the only church. deck that you want to be playing um gotta get out of here. that's that's the only deck that you want to be playing just all three of cuz then cuz you want to streamline your deck as as much as possible so that you have the same cards as as uh, much as possible so you can accomplish that game plan the the most you, you can it's the highest consistency so extreme yeah extremely linear decks so for for example that would be a like like the aggro decks like your your burn decks they like that's what they're doing they're trying to be really aggressive get damage in and finish you off with burn spells doesn't matter what you're playing against that's that's the game plan every single every single game have to be very aggressive, burn them out. You want to be as efficient as possible. That deck should probably have a whole bunch of threes. Um, that's not what you know. That's not a deck that you're kind of changing up your game plan depending on what your opponent's doing. When you're playing mid-range decks that just play long games, control decks that play long games, you should have a lot of one ofs and two ofs in your deck because you're going to be going in because you're going to be playing a lot more turns. You're going to be having a lot of like weird. Uh, scenarios be, be coming up and and um, you know for different games you're in, you know like when you're playing against aggro you're gonna need a certain card when you're playing against control you're gonna need a certain card you, you just need to you need to have a good variety of stuff in your deck 
and even even control decks like you, when you're playing against aggro you're gonna need some cards when you're playing against control you're gonna need some certain cards you know like maybe against you know like with your control deck deep meditation is great against other control decks but maybe not so good against the burn decks so you don't have time to play it so maybe that should be like a one or a two of you know just like that that kind of stuff okay so we're going to be challenging challenging these things and this can attack and i think we just attack with these also especially having the pale cascade <clears throat> Uh, yeah, stranger, I do. It's two out of four for Diana for for Nightfall. So, if they have another Pill Cascade, Diana won't level up yet, so won't save Diana. Okay. Pill Cascade with Curse Keeper continu continues to look really good. Wenrei, Wenrei, I haven't seen anything about any of that. Did you see, you saw an announcement that the new expansion is coming on the 15th? Well, the 15th's a Thursday, so that wouldn't really make sense. It should come on a Wednesday. But I didn't hear anything about that. I think I want to sacrifice this thing, actually. Draw some cards. Strange. Oh. All right, so Blighted Caretaker on Curse Keeper takes up three slots. So I can't, I can't play Yeti Earling. Also, darkness hides in my path. Where was it announced that the new set is going to come the 15th? Was that... Where would you have heard that? I'm not I'm not really interested in, in leaks of the cards. I want to, you know, I, I don't mind waiting until like Riot, uh, you know, announces them. But they're the only ones that would announce whenever the set is. I don't know how that information would, leak, would come out otherwise unless somebody was just making stuff up. So that's, that's the information that I'm interested in. It has... Has Riot somewhere said the set's coming out on the 15th? What are they doing? Unspeakable horror? Okay. Alright, so on a on a Legends of Rune Terra Japanese Twitter account. It has the date on there or something? Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. <laughs> I don't know about the falling comment whenever I have two vengeance already. But, oh well, we're just gonna take it. Darkness. Whatever the cost. Okay, at the at the end it says new expansion on the 15th. Okay. Huh. That's a weird it's a really weird day for it to be. Considering it's always been on um sorry, considering it's always been on Wednesdays before. Find your path in the dark and follow no false light. It's supposed to be October. Hey, never early. <laughs> Hello there. I like the name. Never early. Uh, yeah, I guess we attack with those. 
So that's five. So one more of you is attacking. I don't know, a Black Caretaker or Yeti Yearling. Black Caretaker. We'll just go with the things that attack for the most. Hey, Gifted, just picked up Runeterra yesterday. Awesome, yeah. Yep, here playing at Runeterra. Fear not death. I was expecting the new set to come out like the 28th of October. But maybe it's the 15th, who knows. It's supposed to come out sometime this month. I was definitely expecting the very end of the month. Our light grows brighter. All right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this hush. They can have another pump spell. I don't have mana to recast hush. Okay, cool. I, I don't know, that's not scary. I have star shaping. So they could have like Nocturne here. The problem with playing the Hush is I don't I don't get to have both of these available, the Star Shaping and the Vengeance, where I, I would have had both of those available. Um, so like they have to have like Nocturne plus maybe something else. I have not had a champion die, as far as Rekindler goes. I don't get, like, two blockers with Rekindler. Revolution by our hands. Um, okay, that's scary. So, I can't... Looks like I have to go to one, no matter what I do, right? Like, I, I Vengeance, or Star Shaping, and I go to one either way. Darn, should not cast that Hush. Should not have cast that hush. Yeah, so I guess uns unspeakable horror is gonna kill me. If that last card's another, if it's another unspeakable horror, I'm just gonna die. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's just it. I can't. If it's unspeakable horror or pale cascade, I die. matter which way I go, whether I go Vengeance or Star Shaping. So I'll just go Vengeance now. And so that if this is, doesn't kill me, then we can Star Shaping. So if their top card is Unspeakable Horror, we don't die. Glory. Yeah, should, should be lethal. We get to level up Hecarim. Yes. Yeah, I, I really like this Hecarim deck. Wow, they did draw the Unspeakable Horror. So close. Made the right decision there. Uh, I did go two and three. We've we've played this deck. Yeah, so they top decked that one. Um, so I did go two and three, but the the time before, whenever I played this, we went five and zero. Oh. So played this twice, and so we've gone seven and three in the games. And a lot of those losses that we just had, uh, they were really close. You know, some of those wins were really close too, though. Um, could have gone either way, you know, like, I, it didn't, it's not like, like, sometimes you play a deck that's two and three where you're like, okay, well, our deck probably isn't really competing that much. This deck's very competitive. Um, just, we had some games not go our way. And that happens. Um, but I, I like this one. I really like having the aggressiveness of your Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker, and then, of course, the, the late game of your uh, Celestials and everything. Um, yeah, 7-3 is, yeah, that's, that's a very good record, 70%. Uh, you take that all the time. Um, is it is it perfect? No. Is it like one of the best decks? No. Um, I I like the Mountain Diana and the Heimer Invoke as far as two two other Invoke decks that we've played 
<clears throat> recently. I like both of those more than this one as far as <clears throat> as far as like just ranking up goes. I think those are probably a little bit more powerful than this one. Um, but this one is still quite good. So yeah, that, there we go. So if we, yeah, this is this is what I kind of recommend for a Hecarim deck right now, though. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.